3JS gives you a bunch of ways to form rotation matrices. Here's what one of them looks like, a rotation around the z-axis. The Greek letter theta is the angle of rotation. The cosine and sine of this angle are used to form a somewhat symmetric piece of the matrix here. The rest of the matrix is left alone. By leaving these values in the third row 0, and this value here being 1, this has the effect of leaving the z-coordinate untouched. This makes sense, since when you rotate around the z-axis, the z-values shouldn't change. Here's a real rotation matrix around the z-axis, for a rotation angle of 53.1 degrees. As an example, the coordinate 1, 0, 0 transforms to the coordinate 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0. The coordinate is rotated counterclockwise around the origin. One way to look at things is that you're rotating a point from one location to another. Another way to look at it is that you're changing the frame of reference. The rotation transform can also be thought of taking our original point and looking it up to see what value it has on these two new axes. For example, on our new x-axis, the point's coordinate is 0 0.6. On our new y-axis, the point's coordinate is 0 0.8. On the left, we're rotating the coordinate with respect to the axes. On the right, we're rotating the axes and then seeing where the coordinate lies with respect to these axes. Either interpretation is correct, and both have their strengths. If we rotate the first interpretation so that the x and y axes are aligned with the second, we see that the transformed point is in the same orientation to the axes in both cases. This second interpretation is the one that helped me understand how a dot product is rotating a point. In an earlier lesson, we talked about how the dot product between two normalized vectors gives us the cosine of the angle between them. Rotation is a similar use of the dot product. We use the cosine of the rotation angle to give us two new axes, both of which are normalized. That is, their lengths are both one. The dot product between our test point's coordinates and each rotation axis gives us the coordinate of a new location. For example, 0 0.6 is here, and 0 0.8 goes over here. A dot product projects one vector onto another, which is what gives us these coordinates. That was a simple test case, where the vector to our test point was of length one. If we do the same analysis for another point, we get the same result with both ways of thinking. Here's a new point, which has the same location on both of our graphs. On the left, we rotate the point to its new position, then read the coordinates off of its axes. On the right, we rotate the axes and read the point's coordinates with respect to these axes. For example, here's x's and y's. The way we read off these coordinates is to take a dot product between each axis and the vector to the point. So here's our x-axis, and here's our vector, and we take a dot product between the two to get this value here. This is what a matrix does, computes a dot product. When we've used the dot product for materials, both vectors were normalized. Here, our axis is normalized, but the vector to the point is not. The vector here can be of any length. 